All right, sweeties, gather round. Let's talk about the Liberal Democrats, or Lib Dems as they're known. Picture the scene. 1988 big hair, shoulder pads and a brand spanking new political party. The Liberal Party and the Social Democratic Party, or SDP, decided to merge. It was a marriage made in, well, not quite heaven, but Westminster. They wanted something new, something different. A party for the rest of us, darling. The early days were all about finding their feet. They championed things like electoral reform, yawn, I know, but important, and environmental issues. They were like that friend who brings their own reusable straws everywhere, a bit different, but with their heart in the right place. Their first leader was Paddy Ashdown, a former soldier with a twinkle in his eye. He was all about making the Lib Dems a force to be reckoned with. They gained seats in Parliament, chipped away at Labour and the Conservatives and made themselves known. It was slow going, but they were on their way, the little party that could. Now, darlings, politics is a marathon, not a sprint. The Lib Dems knew this. They kept plugging away, campaigning on local issues and being generally decent chaps. They had their moments in the sun, like when they won a shock by election victory in 1993. It was like that time I wore that red dress to the BAFTAs. Unexpected, but oh, so fabulous. After Paddy came Charles Kennedy, a charismatic Scot with a way with words. He opposed the Iraq war, remember that? He stood up for what he believed in, even when it was unpopular. A true leader, darling, not just a politician. The Lib Dems were becoming a real force in British politics. They were the party of protest, the alternative to the big two. They were like that independent boutique you discover, full of unique and interesting pieces. Fast forward to 2010, and oh my, a hung parliament. It was chaos, darling, pure chaos. No one party had a majority. The Lib Dems, with Nick Clegg at the helm, were suddenly the bells of the ball. They could choose who to partner with, Labour or the Conservatives. In the end, they went with David Cameron and the Conservatives. It was a controversial decision, like swapping your morning croissant for a bowl of porridge. Sensible, but a bit dull. They formed a coalition government, the first in decades. The Lib Dems got some of their policies through, like raising the income tax threshold. More money for shoes, darling. But they also had to compromise, which didn't go down well with everyone. Still, they were in the big leagues now, sitting at the grown-up table. Oh honey, disaster. Stumbles and fumbles. Now darling, being in government isn't all sunshine and roses. The Lib Dems learned that the hard way. They had to make tough decisions like raising tuition fees. Remember the student protests? It damaged their reputation like spilling red wine on a white sofa, not a good look. The coalition wasn't always a happy marriage either. There were arguments, disagreements and the occasional public spat. It was like watching an episode of Real Housewives entertaining, but a bit cringeworthy. By the 2015 election, the Lib Dems were bruised and battered. They lost most of their seats in Parliament. It was a bloodbath, darling. A political massacre. They went from heroes to zeros in the blink of an eye. The Lib Dem limbo. Where are they now? So where are the Lib Dems now? Well, they're still around, but they're a bit like that vintage handbag you keep meaning to get repaired, full of potential, but not quite ready for prime time. They've had a few leaders since Clegg, but none have managed to recapture the magic of the coalition years. They're still fighting for the same things fairness, equality, and a more democratic society. They're like that friend who always brings a vegan dish to the barbecue. A bit niche, but you've got to admire their commitment. A future orange glow. Possibilities and dreams. The future is uncertain, darling, like the British weather. But one thing's for sure, the Lib Dems aren't going anywhere. They'll keep fighting their corner, hoping for another chance to make a difference. Maybe one day they'll be back in government, shaping the country for the better. Or maybe they'll remain a party of protest, holding the powerful to account. Whatever happens, they'll do it with their usual blend of idealism and pragmatism. They're the Lib Dems, darling. What can you do?